The Mixed Mornings and More podcast with Steph and Sean. Now available daily. Good morning, world. Hey, good morning. Happy Thursday. It is May 18th. It's 5.32. Ugh, we're late again. Aw, oh, man. What is up with us? I don't know. I guess we maybe need a long weekend to recover from Yeah, that. better take some days off, think about what we've done. <laughs> You at least. Yeah, I'm off tomorrow. I'll be back on Tuesday, and I promise I'll really strive for that 5.30 start. Very fair, very fair. Uh, We'll give another wildfire update right now for those that aren't going to be around for the 6 o'clock news. Um, the, The update is basically we're good. We, Yay! Yeah, we had a couple fires kind of spark up on Tuesday. Turned out to be nothing. They were There was one kind of by the highway. Uh, crews are on the scene like immediately. That never grew bigger than like a hectare. Awesome. And so that was awesome. And then the one by Engstrom Lake south of Anzac, uh, it's around five, five hectares or so. Uh, 20 wildland firefighters on the ground. They got like four helicopters, lots of heavy equipment attending the scene. It's being held right now. It's been held for a couple. I would say over a day. Wow. Now. And so that's just chilling. And it's very clear out today. Like not a lot of haze or smoke either. Hey, on your drive. I'm so thankful. I was like, oh my goodness, the sky is blue and I can tell. Yeah. Walking to work this morning, I was like looking up at the sky and I could actually see like stars and things. <laughs> <laughs> what a beautiful thing to be able to say. It's so funny. Like, you know, you, you get used to it being cloudy or you get used to it being smoky. But when it clears, it just feels like it's such a gift. Hello, moon. No, um, <laughs> um uh, not for long. Looking oh, at wow. fire, Thank look, you. looking at firesmoke.ca. I'll be the bearer of bad news. <laughs> it looks like uh, winds are going to start pushing north, and we're going to start seeing some smoke come up from some other fires not around us. When? Uh, tonight. Let me just um, frame by frame here, hour by hour. It looks like maybe around dinner time, six o'clock tonight is when the smoke will start pushing through so probably when you wake up tomorrow might be a little hazy might be a little rough okay so everybody enjoy looking at that blue sky today (laughs) maybe stare at the sun no don't (laughs) take it all in big thanks to our firefighters who are working so hard out there well sean i've done it again I've brought you some purse banana bread. I am so grateful for you. Thank you so much. I have it in front of me here. Okay, so this happened at comedy night on Tuesday, right? Yeah, yeah. The comedian came up to me afterwards and was so sweet and said that he baked banana bread very thoughtfully for the wait staff to thank them. And he (laughs) had an extra and asked if I wanted his loaf of banana bread. You're like, I have a sad bachelor that I host a morning show with every day. He will love this. I didn't even, yeah. I mean, I knew that you would eat it probably, but I was just like, well, I'm not going to break your heart and say no. So. And didn't he say it's been it. like, it's been a while. It's been like two days since like. He did apologize that it might be stale, that he had to prepare for coming. And so it was already two days old. And I was mm-hmm. like, man, that's okay. Now I have to tell you that happened on Tuesday. So now it's four days old. Have you opened it? Have you looked at it? I'm holding it. I thought I was expecting like a slice, like a, like that you would get at like a store type of thing. It's a full tiny loaf. Yeah. He made you a loaf of, of bread. Uh, no, I. I haven't opened it or anything because I don't like bananas and oh, yeah. the intention was never for me to eat it. All so right, I figured gonna, I'd keep I'm it fresh. Break it a his. little bit here. It, it smells great. Almost a little cinnamony. You're eating it. Yeah. Moist. It's great. <laughs> Tastes great. I have to tell you, I mean, like during his, his set, he did talk a lot about um, THC. Like I was wondering if maybe he put anything in there for you. Yeah, Stay you know. tuned. We'll see how the show goes. The comedian gets the last <laughs> laugh. <laughs> if you sleep with the window open, you do not want to leave your bed this morning. Ooh, wee, was it chilly. <laughs> and you like this feeling of like, my alarm's going off and I have to get up, but I'm it's freezing out there. Oh, I had one of my best sleeps last night. I had the window cracked a little bit. Wasn't as uh, smoky last night, so it cracked the window. And I remember that it was getting down to like four or so. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a crispy sleep tonight. And so what I like is that the blankets are so warm, but then everything else is like so cold. Mm. And so this morning when I woke up, 
I like kind of put my arms outside of the blankets. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> let's just rewind a little bit. Uh, let's go back under the blankets. And I didn't come to work for, I think I was like 10 minutes late today. Wow. Okay. Because those blankets were just so cozy. <sighs> and that doesn't bother you. You're not like, oh, man, I wish that I... I uh, could get out of bed easier. Yeah. <laughs> this, this bed is too great. No, it was like the perfect mixture. I even tossed aside my comforter. What? I, I, I don't need my comforter anymore because it's just been so warm. And even at nighttime, it's just been so warm. But this time, I, I brought on an extra side blanket. Uh, I think I woke up at like midnight, one o'clock or so. And I was a little a little chilly. And so I, I grabbed an extra one, tossed it on. But after that, I was just like, woo, I want this sleep to last forever. Wow. Okay. That is like the opposite of how I woke up this morning. I did not have my window open. It was freezing cold outside regardless of that fact. And the thought of putting my feet on the ground was awful. <laughs> but I wasn't like, ooh, I should stay in bed. It's so nice and warm. I was just like, ugh, why is it so cold? <laughs> like, I, I don't, I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, two different worlds over here, I guess. <laughs> oh. I've got some Thursday thoughts, Sean. Sure. All right. So I use my GPS for everything. Mm. Um, any time I have to venture off the main roads, I'm like, all right, don't know where that is. Better start from home and, and get to where I'm headed. Yeah. Um, pizza delivery people. Mm -hmm. We have GPSs in our phones. And, and I guess we had those little sat navs in our cars. <laughs> what, for 10 years now? Sure. What do they do before that? How did they get to where they were headed? Maps. <laughs> Literal <laughs> maps that you held with your hands. Yeah, but you have to drive. Like, how do you look down at a map well, and... you're, you're talking to a former pizza delivery. Oh, okay. I was not aware I was Number in Number one, here. Panago pizza delivery driver in Regina <laughs> way back. Uh, it, maybe this is why I'm a big map guy, but you would have, you would definitely have a big blown up map in the back for the delivery drivers. Of the car? In, in the back of the store, I oh, should okay. say. And so when you were going out, maybe you had two or three deliveries, you would just kind of make it in the, the general area. So you weren't just like taking two hours on a call type of thing. But then I think th what I would do is I would remember the main street that I needed, that I knew how to get to all the time. So say like if I was going down to Thickwood and uh, I was going to an address off like Signal Road. Well, I know how to get to Signal Road. I don't have to remember, okay, turn out of uh, the Stone Creek Plaza here onto this street and then that street. No, get to Signal Road and then maybe like turn on Hillcrest Drive and then Highfield Street or whatever, oh, like okay. right, right type of thing. And then you just like remember two streets instead of like 17 different turns. Just remember how to get to that main street and then remember one or two turns. Wow. Okay. Okay. This is so interesting. So basically, <laughs> if you were a pizza delivery driver, you probably needed to have lived there for a while to really get your bearings yeah. right. Nah, yeah, it definitely helps. It definitely helps. I was so good at uh, just like being a map guy. <laughs> I believe it. I'm like judging by the way you're a map guy already. Yeah, I w other delivery drivers in Regina would call me on the road. Like they'd call and they'd be like, "Hey, how do I get here again?" And I like might not even be by a map, but I'd just be like, "Oh, you just." Turn here and then go here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow, Sean, you are the person you want in your corner. My yeah. goodness. I would be the worst delivery driver ever. <laughs> I would fail. I would quit the first day. We found out earlier in the week that you are downtown in the new Kiam Park on the mural. Right underneath the Vor McMurray logo. Yeah, I'm feeling very special right now. I can't believe that my face made it on there. We were trying to crack the case. We were searching through all of the social media. We were like, where did this picture come from? And then there was a QR code <laughs> on the wall to figure it all out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and remember there was a pop-up photography tour that happened a year or two ago. Yeah, I completely forgot about it. They came into our studio, Crystal McReady did, and she took some pictures of us. And Sean, unfortunately... Yeah. <laughs> You're not in the picture with me. Well, I got the face for radio. You're the more beautiful one over there. You're definitely the marketable one of the two, so it's very understandable. Oh, you are too, too kind. Oh, my goodness. Um, but so fun um, to see that mural. I mean, it's fun to kind of look at it and see if you see anybody else you recognize, because it is all people in Fort McMurray yeah. and, and in surrounding areas in Conklin and Jean-Bier. And 
it's just not stock photos, which is really cool. It's it's really community members. Yeah, Crystal did a great job of all of that. At least that's who took your our photo uh, and your photo here in the studio. And it's just all beautifully uh, put together. But it's like, where do we go from here now, Steph? Like, are we holding like autograph sessions? <laughs> like, oh you're 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 big time now. Like, you might need a security detail going around. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that right now. <laughs> Just super humble over there. No worries. I'll be your agent, okay? If you need to get a hold of Steph, talk to me first. I'll, we'll work out percentages, all right? Thanks, John. So WestJet potentially going on strike overnight around 3 a.m., I believe, is when it could potentially happen for our time zone. And it's a little complicated in a, in a couple of ways, but it could potentially impact the entire nation. Yeah, for sure. I mean... When flights get grounded, it doesn't matter. It's never convenient for the people who are flying, right? <laughs> yeah, so true. And and so the way it's complicated is WestJet, uh, the company, had a press release go out at midnight, essentially. And it said, so starting today, we're going to start canceling some flights because they don't want to abandon and strand uh, a bunch of people um, at remote locations, essentially. So a lot of its 737 and 787 fleets are, are going to be stopped. But they did say WestJet Encore, WestJet Link, and very limited 737 flights will continue to operate. Now, how does that affect our region here? I'm trying to, it's hard to find out what's an Encore flight and what's not just through simple looking at like Fly YMM and stuff. It just says WestJet in general. But then if you like kind of Google the, the flight number, uh -huh. then uh, the Google can kind of tell you if it's WestJet Encore or not. And I, I'm finding a lot of WestJet flights to and from Fort McMurray are the Encore type. I, the way I understand Encore is that it's the same as Air Canada Jazz. It's the small Tiny. planes that take you in between, you know, Fort Mac and Edmonton right. or Fort Mac and Calgary type thing. Okay. And so, like, if you only have one stop, <laughs> if you need a connector, <laughs> you might be out of luck. But if you're just doing a quick little how are you to Vancouver or Calgary or Edmonton, you might be good. Yeah. The interesting thing is how long will this take for them to negotiate? Because if we look at what happened at Christmas with the snowstorms, you know, people were stranded and yeah. still dealing with problems. And I, I know that my friend Jamie didn't get her luggage for nine days of Ooh. her visit to here. And then she only just last week text and said she got reimbursed from her Christmas hotel stays while she waited and waited to get a flight. Yeah. And, and I think just how sparse it is in Canada where it's like... WestJet, Air Canada, good luck. Um, <laughs> I think with with all of that, like you have to come to a deal quick, or else someone like the government of Canada has to step in and be like, "Look, you're ruining the country right now. People need to get places. Figure it out." Uh huh. So, so I, I can't see it lasting weeks, plural. All right, that's your prediction. Well, it has see to be under a week. What happens? Yeah, it has to be. Conference finals for the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs continue tonight with the Florida Panthers taking on the Carolina Hurricanes. And we go another year making it 30 of a Canadian team not hosting Lord Stanley staff. Ouch. Mm -hmm. on, we filled yeah. the brackets at the start. Oh, my goodness. Looking at mine, it's just X's everywhere. I got nothing right. Same. It's all gone. At least I thought maybe with you, with like these upsets that like someone who's not well versed in <laughs> <laughs> the sports world. I thought maybe you would have had like some some awesome like upsets like picked in there, but I guess not. Yeah, I think the problem was that I really wanted to go like loyal to my husband from Colorado and yeah. I chose his team through and through and they just are gone. Yeah, I was I tried to be loyal to the oil as well. <laughs> and <laughs> loyal to the loyal oil. To the oil. Goilers and it just didn't work. I had I had the Goilers versus Boston in the final. Boston lost in the first round. Goylers lost in the second round. My final four was, who did I have? Minnesota, Edmonton, Boston, and New York Rangers. Gross. What was I thinking? I had Colorado, Boston, Devils, and Oilers. Yeah. And the Devils are gone too, right? Like, I really failed really badly. Yeah, I think we all did. I think the whole world did. Like, even Vegas. Vegas was saying that the Canadian teams had the best chance. So they said the Oilers out of the West had the best chance and the Leafs out of the East had the best chance after the first round was over and that we all know what happened to the maple leaves and 
and the Oilers just got got blasted by by Vegas. So it's been a, it's been an interesting playoffs to say the least. I believe I want to say I don't think Florida's won the cup. Carolina has. Vegas hasn't won the cup, and Dallas has. I'm pretty sure. So I think two out of four teams haven't won the cup yet. So we could potentially get a new team to win the cup. Should we make a new bracket? Do we have to to guess who's going to win it all again no. now that we know the last four I have teams? too much shame. I'm, oh. I'm going to get like everything wrong again. <laughs> I can't deal with that anymore. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, are you taking notes from my notebook on how to take holidays? I think I am. I did it, Sean. You bragged so much about those three four-day weeks in a row. I yeah. had to try it for myself. Unbelievable. You're not showing up tomorrow. <laughs> I am not. So I had last Friday off. I volunteered with Girl Guides for the day, which was wonderful. And I have this Friday off to enjoy the the long weekend extra long <laughs> and then everybody has monday off and so next week will be a four-day week too wow. thanks for the tips sean the Good. expert oh. has taught correctly i've learned and I'm, I'm giving it a try it's pretty great so far good on you Good on you. Maybe I'll get my parents to co-host again. They did an <laughs> adequate job. Some people some people like them, so maybe they'll get the call-up again. They did an <laughs> adequate job. I was expecting they did a great job, an excellent job, uh, astounding adequate. Maybe, maybe my parents can make a, a reoccurrence again. <laughs> it's been a ton of fun, but it's time for us to get out of here. Yes, safe travels over there. you got a long weekend ahead of you. Lots of outdoorsy things that you love to do, so be safe. Hope to see you back next week. <laughs> Sean, I'm busy. That was so nice. And then all of a sudden, so ominous. Hope to see you back next week. I hope I'm back too, Sean. Me my too. goodness. My goodness. Me too. I'm and safe. Be safe. Not even like I'm flying anywhere, so I might just get stranded. It's, I'm driving somewhere, and you're like, <laughs> be safe. Don't fall off the side of a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> well. Well, be safe. Okay. All right. I'll really take those words to heart. It is time for me to get out of here. I will be back on Tuesday, Lord willing. <laughs> Sean hoping. <laughs> Let's all cross our That's fingers right. for that. I okay? will see you on Tuesday. Thank okay. You. Say hi to your dogs for us. Goodbye. Want more of today's show? Download the Mixed Mornings and More podcast. Now available every weekday.